Joanna, come on up to the stage. Give her a big welcome. So growing up, my mother was Judy Garland to me. Um, she was <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald and a little bit of Billie Holiday um, and Liza Minnelli. When someone close to you is so into some kind of music, I find for myself, I conflate the music with the person. And my mother was super fucked up. And yet, with that music, I had insight into her. She was that, you know, very vulnerable, yet tough, yet horrible choices with men, heart of gold woman. And all of those <laughs> songs, you know, they gave me that insight because a lot of times she was a bitch to me. And this helped to give me that insight. My sister in junior high school, so friggin' depressed, so depressed, just hated school, hated everyone, slept through her classes so that other kids would stick chewing gum in her Jufro. My sister had one of those Jufros. And I'd, she'd come home, I'd have to pick the gum out of her hair in her room every night, Janice Ian, 17. <laughs> Right, learn the truth at 17, you know, that then girls whose name is never called for choosing my sister 17 over and over. So that my sister was Janice Ian to me. I didn't really see, I had Janice Ian and Liza Minnelli at home. And then years later, the love of my life, the first true love of my life, I was 23. I had not yet had sleepover sex. I had had some sex, but I had not had the sleepover, have pancakes in the morning, talk about things the next day sex, <laughs> and freaky sex. I haven't had that kind in a while, but it's very rare and good. I recommend it. And, um, and this, this man was, I was doing stand-up comedy at the time. I was 23, just starting going to open mics. He was also, he's 27. His day job, he was an insurance lawyer. Um, but he was really smart and he looked just like David Bowie. I mean, he was David Bowie to me and forevermore David Bowie. And not only that, his favorite songs were David Bowie songs. So Mike never existed, really. I had this wild, crazy crush on David Bowie. And the thing was is that he, and he was a little gay, um, I have to say. Um, he had he had the same, he had very high cheekbones, he had that long face, he was six foot three. He, had jet black hair, that's the only difference. Um, and, and he was a little effeminate, but you know, I'm kind of a handsome girl. So you know, um, <laughs> most people think I'm gay. Everyone thought he was gay. We were a perfect couple. <laughs> and, um, and I was doing comedy in these clubs late at night and being very butch, I would ride my 10 speed to the clubs because it was safer to get home on a 10 speed than wait for an hour with the perverts in the subway. And Mike, being kind of crazy and kind of cool, would actually, I would give him a ride home on the bike. Um, and he would sit on the seat and I would pedal wildly. And he, this was three o'clock in the morning getting out of these places and he would wave to the janitors and to the homeless and he would sing Rebel Rebel really, really loud. <laughs> It was David Bowie. And so I, I was with this fellow <clears throat> for a while and wanted him to take me seriously, but we were only really kind of seeing each other in comedy clubs, nothing serious. Um, a little bit of sleepover sex, that was nice. I wanted more, I'm a woman. Um, so finally there was a big breakthrough. He actually invited me to his company's annual picnic. Thank you. <laughs> an annual, but I had not been invited to an annual anything, ever. I mean, once a family reunion when I was five years old in Madison, Wisconsin that involved donkeys, and that's all I knew. That was my only preparation. And I, so I was so psyched, it was like, come to his company picnic, we're gonna be public now, because we'd never gone anywhere normal. We'd been in the, these you know, cockroach infested dives, and this was where daylight would be part of the picture. And, <laughs> so different and I would meet his his people from his planet work and and I was just so excited I was like there was that and, and marriage had to be just like next you know had to be and I and I and I knew he and, and and he was so like like I had this thing his rebel rebel and this was my man and I knew that he loved me because that's who I was I was this rebel we get to the picnic party he did not want a rebel with him I found out this a bit later on, he was at a picnic table and I was 
uh, a little bored, um, meeting his people, they turned out to be dead inside. Um, <laughs> and however, there was a part of Mike that was also dead inside and bonding, you know, there. We all have those little parts. And I wasn't aware of this part. And I just sort of wandered away from the picnic table. And I have always, again, been very butch. And I wanted to show off. And don't ask me, because I have no explanation other than God strike me dead what I did next. I decided I was going to show off and climb an oak tree. <laughs> Barefoot, OK? Mike is continuing his conversation with his boss. And, and looks over, sees me about halfway up, and gives me the look of, I will kill you, and get down, which I did. And we kind of were awkward for the next part of the picnic, made it home. And I couldn't help but remember thinking that Mike maybe didn't want a rebel girl. He wanted a China doll. Thank you very much. <laughs> Joanna Clearfield.